Along with the Pixel 4, Google also just released a new Chromebook called the Pixelbook Go. So in this video, let's do a complete walkthrough on it like we normally do. Now basically that means I'm gonna go through every spec and feature I possibly can on this new device so that you guys are better prepared should you be in the market to actually go buy one. With that said, there's a lot to go through. So let's get started with the styling. So firstly, the new Pixel Go comes in four models. We have an eighth gen Intel M3 processor model with eight gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, and an FHD display for 649. We have two Intel i5 models with either eight or 16 gigs of RAM, a 128 gig hard drive, and an FHD display for 849 and 999 respectively. And lastly, a top model with an i7, 16 gigs of RAM, a 256 gig SSD, and a 4K display. Now all the models basically have the same overall design and the same weight of 2.3 pounds, minus the 4K model that adds 0.1 pounds to that. Either way, they're light, like the Go name would suggest. Now they're made out of a soft touch magnesium that has a nice feel to it actually, and comes in either black or pink. We have a rigid bottom at the bottom to make it easier to grip while holding and carrying around. Moving around the device, we have a two megapixel F 2.0 aperture camera capable of 1080p video at 60 frames a second that looks and sounds like this. We have a bit of a softer keyboard that feels nice to type on actually, that Google has dubbed hush keys to allude to the fact that they don't make a lot of sound. And to probably throw a dig at another laptop company who has gotten some flack for loud keys, I'm sure. Here though, is what they actually sound like. Now these keys are backlit, have a 19 millimeter pitch and have a Google Assistant button for quick access to the virtual assistant. In addition to talking to her, you can also type, which will have her respond in kind and not talk out loud for, you know, when you're in environments that that might be pretty obnoxious to those around you. Under those keys, we have a large etched glass trackpad that is a anti-smudge coating that, at least in my initial use of the device, does a decent job of reducing fingerprints and makes the trackpad feel just smoother and gestures work a little bit better. For audio, we have dual front firing speakers that sound like this. In this trident resides the power of Atlantis. Google put a 50% larger battery in this Pixelbook compared to the last one and claims that it has a 12 hour battery life. The included 45 watt charger can also apparently give the laptop two hours of use on a 20 minute charge. Now for ports, we have two USB-C ports, one on either side, and we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well. For software, what would a Chromebook be without running Chrome OS? Let's run through that really quick for anyone who is new to how that OS works. When you turn on the device, you're presented with a familiar desktop-like experience. At the bottom, we have our shelf. This has any apps that you pin to it and can be moved from the bottom to the left or the right and also can be auto hid if you want. On the left of your shelf, you have a button that brings up a universal search that allows you to search your device for files, applications, search the web, etc., with suggestions beneath it based on your usage. And you can click the arrow here to bring up all of your installed apps. Now speaking of, you can also use the Play Store to download Android apps onto the device in addition to the normal Chrome OS apps. On the right of the shelf, you have your quick actions. In here, you have access to things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, notifications, brightness and volume, etc. You can also click the gear to get to all of your device settings as well. And honestly, that's kind of just sort of the gist of it. The idea behind Chromebooks is that a lot of us do most of our work on the internet in a browser like Chrome, for example. And this just sort of takes that experience and spreads it to the entire computer, basically. Clicking on Chrome apps like Gmail or Drive or YouTube actually just open up a Chrome browser window and bring you to those websites. The nice thing is that it is treated by the web as a proper desktop browser, unlike say maybe a tablet or a phone, generally speaking. And so you could do anything you would in a browser for the most part. The downside here comes when you need to install programs that are not Android apps apps or browser plugins that require Mac or Windows, etc. But because it doesn't have any of that or a full load operating system like that, the battery can last longer, it's lighter, it needs less storage, etc. Now my only concern with this is that, uh, you know, to me, a Chromebook is usually something that you would buy if it was cheap. Because it can only do the web browsing thing, it's great to have as like a cheap extra device that you can kind of run around with and maybe write on and coffee shops and it lasts all day and that's kind of nice. But there's generally, depending on what you do for work, a time where you're gonna still need your PC or your Mac. And so it kind of becomes a secondary device. And so because of that, it needs to be cheaper. Now, maybe if you're a student and all you do are things in the browser, then this isn't a bad option. But in my mind, even in that scenario, you still want it to be cheaper. 
And that's what kind of confuses me a little bit about Pixel Books. They're generally a little more expensive. And for the price, you could probably get a pretty decent Windows computer, or in some cases, some of these models, you can get a pretty decent like MacBook Air. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments below what you think of the pricing on these, even though they are a little bit less than the other Pixel Book that came out before. Is it still too high? Do you guys actually use these as your main computers? And would you be willing to pay close to $1,000, $700 for something that is a Chromebook? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments below. Love hearing from you guys. Also, if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also, check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next door to subscribe so you can notify when I do new videos. Also, link in the description will take you to the email newsletter that I do that goes out once a week. It has all the videos that I do here, plus other tips and tricks and fun other things from the website that don't necessarily make it here to YouTube. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.